Hey everyone and welcome to the climate campaign update for the New South Wales ACT Synod of the Uniting Church. John D, Jess and I are going to be doing a quick recap of the Synod resolution, talking about the task groups that came out as a result of that and giving you uh, some information about how you can join in with the church's work to reduce our emissions as part of caring for God's creation. First, a quick recap of what's been going on around the world and in Australia. We know that human beings have been displaced uh, in many parts of the world already due to rising sea levels and especially intensifying storms and that that's all attributable to climate change. We also know in Australia we've gone through one of the worst bushfire seasons we've ever experienced. Over a billion creatures perished and continue to suffer lack of food and water. We also know that the Great Barrier Reef has just in the last week or two gone through the third uh, mass bleaching event in just five years and we're basically on track for most of the reef to be uh, utterly destroyed and extinct within 10 years unless we can rapidly uh, reduce our global emissions. How rapidly? Well, according to the United Nations Emissions Gap Report, we need to reduce our global emissions by 75% over the next 10 years from our current levels. And Australia as a rich nation with a record high levels of carbon pollution uh, should be doing even better than that. It's quite a challenge. In better news, we know that our Uniting Church has a very long and proud history of caring for God's creation and raising these issues within public discourse. So our very foundational document, The Basis of Union, actually talks about how God's goal for the earth is reconciliation and renewal, and that the church's call is to serve that goal of God's and to work with God and alongside God in creating that. We also, in our first statement to the nation, our 1977 statement, said that we were concerned with the rights of future generations and urged the wise use of energy and the protection of the environment. And this is a tradition that we have continued all throughout our history and we continue today in many different actions and in many different ways that we raise our voice and show that we care for creation. And we don't do this alone. In fact, we do it with many, many millions of people, billions of people all around the world who also love this beautiful earth. So in July last year at our Synod meeting, we brought forward a Synod Climate Action Resolution. And this is how Jane Fry introduced it. So I am the General Secretary and that's a thing. However, for this thing, it's not the most important thing about me, as far as I'm concerned. The most important thing about me is that I'm a grandmother. How many grandparents are there in this room? Okay, you can put your hands down. How many aspiring grandparents are there in this room? Okay. <laughs> yeah, your kids are watching. <laughs> so how many of this, how many, shush, how many people in this room actually care about the world that our grandchildren uh, all our grandchildren are going to live in. Okay, that's the most important thing about me for this proposal. When I was a little girl, and I don't know if lots of little girls think like this, but when I was a little girl, I was pretty sure that I was living at the end of the world. And then when I was a young adult and a university student, revolting in the 70s, I started to think that concerted human effort might be able to change that trajectory. So I went from doomsday to possibility. And now that I'm ancient, I find myself sometimes oscillating between those two things. But now that I'm a grandparent, I don't have the luxury of doomsday anymore. So in a minute, you're going to hear from kids from some of our Uniting Church schools. 
And as you listen to these kids, you will know that it's not just ancient parties like me that care about this stuff. Listen to these kids. I think I'm very worried about climate change because it's not something that is happening like in the distant future, it's happening now and like we're, here, we're seeing the effects of it already. I feel extreme anxiety for the incoming future. It's been predicted by scientists that if we continue at this rate 11 years from now, we will reach a point of no return, which really should be enough of a sign for us to get moving and try to make a bigger impact. And I'm worried about climate change because it's my future and potentially my kids' future that is at jeopardy. I think it's really demoralising as well. But it's just we know all this stuff about it. We know that it's having a massive global impact and yet you just see governments sitting there doing nothing about it. And it's just like, do you even care? So this was the resolution that was brought and that was passed by Synod. That the Synod develops a Synod-wide climate action strategy to reduce carbon emissions across all councils and agencies of the church and to advocate to federal, state governments and local councils to take decisive steps to reduce our emissions nationally. And secondly, to support initiatives taken by young people in advocating for action on climate change, including the global climate strikes. So the decision by the Synod to create a Synod-wide climate action strategy was a really important thing, um, but it still left the question open about what was going to happen, how it was going to be imp implemented. And as the General Secretary said, this is something, tackling climate change is something that will require really strong human effort. So the Synod leadership team made the decision to bring uh, a broader group of people together from across the Synod, people who are really interested in the church addressing the issue of climate change and sit down and consider, okay, what are we actually gonna do to make this happen? So that group met on December the 10th, 2019, to work out how are we gonna make this strategy a reality? And out of that, that group formed five task groups to actually put the strategy uh, into practice. And those uh, five task groups you can see here on the screen are the Synod Agency Board and School Emissions Reduction Task Group, the Church and Individual uh, Members Emissions Reduction Task Group, the Advocacy Task Group, the Climate Anxiety and Pastoral Care Task Group, and the Mass Actions. Uh, task group, which includes uh, school strikes. So in terms of synod boards and agencies, you can see that Uniting Care and particularly the ageing facilities are by far the biggest uh, contributor to our emissions, apart from individual members, but have also done the most work on reducing them. Uh, this task group has been looking at the moment, particularly at vehicle emissions and uh, transiting our fleet to hybrids and uh, then eventually to electric vehicles and looking at how quickly we can do that, as well as looking at our standing energy, because that's our biggest source of emissions. Um, Uniting has about as many solar panels as it can fit, but there's some other scope for that on other church properties, as well as both purchasing and investing uh, in renewable energy options. So that's kind of what our focus will be on the next few months, and um, we're hoping to be able to make a significant contribution there. So the Church and Individual Emissions Task Group uh, focuses, as the name suggests, on reducing emissions in congregations. And to do that, we're using the Five Leaf Eco Award uh, resources to really look at our, what our emissions are and uh, identify strategies to reduce them. And the other big focus is on our emissions as members. That's actually one of the largest uh, emissions of us as a church is our, our collective emissions as individuals and as household units. And there, we're looking at the Living the Change initiative, which focuses on reducing emissions in three important areas, and that's transport, our own individual energy use, and our diet. So with the advocacy group, in 2020, we're focused on advocating to our local councils 
to either join or increase their level of commitment to the City Power Partnership. That's a program that's run by the Climate Council. And so local councils who join the partnership have six months to make five action pledges across any of the four areas that include renewable energy, energy efficiency, sustainable transport, and working in partnership to tackle climate change. The Climate Anxiety and Pastoral Care Group is looking at how climate anxiety and grief and solastalgia and other mental health issues are really affecting our churches and communities at this time and particularly as we consider what the future may be or not be. Uh, and so we're working on developing a range of resources to help people and to help churches to support their community at this time and through those challenges. And one of the resources that we're putting together is our Uniting Earth Climate Conference 2020. Uh, so this conference will be a combination of our climate pastoral care training, like we did last year, and our church climate action training. And we'll also be having some great talks around climate communication. Um, so this is going to be a really important conference with a lot of uh, expert input and it's really worthwhile uh, coming along and also particularly nagging your minister and your church leaders and any pastoral care people in your congregation to come along. So put it in your diary, July 30th to the 1st of August. So um, coming up on May the 15th is the next School for Climate strike. Um, given that we can't meet together in person, um, the strike has moved online. And in preparation for the day, uh, you can make a 30 second video and finish the sentence, I support a safe climate future for all because, and video that and then post it across all your social media platforms on May the 15th and um, on the 10th of May um, in the week before the May the 15th um, we have a wonderful um, package of worship resources collection of videos that feature a lot of voices across the church including many young people um, reflecting on different pieces of theology um, you can download it you can use it in your service you can share it with your friends um, and you can also participate in two different services that will be held on the 15th of May. Um, one is being organised by the Australian Religious Response for Climate Change and it's a multi-faith event. Deidre Palmer will also be participating in that. And another um, event being organised by Common Grace. Um, and then the, that will be at three o'clock and that will lead into um, the, the main event, which will be online um, between four to eight o'clock on the Friday night. And um, you, can, you can all participate in building a better future for all and supporting the Youth Voice for Climate. We hope after hearing about what's been happening that you're thinking, look, this is really great. Um, I, I want to be part of it. So there are uh, several different ways that you can be involved. Uh, the first one is you can find out more and find out about what resources uh, we're offering by visiting uh, the Uniting Earth website. As I said, there's lots of information and resources on that page. And also really importantly, you can look out for news uh, about climate strategy initiatives uh, that'll be uh, disseminated through the website and other channel, channels. And when you hear about those, please get involved and encourage people in your congregation or your community get involved as well. You might also be interested in finding out more about one of those task groups and, and playing a part. And if you're interested in that, then please contact the task groups directly and let them uh, know of your interests and they'll talk to you about how you can be involved. So we uh, might just finish this presentation, uh, this overview with a quote from the inspirational climate activist Greta Thunberg, who 
who said this, we do need hope, of course we do, but the one thing we need more than hope is action. Once we start to act, hope is everywhere.